you all. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. I don't know uh, from which time zones you are all. Uh, so good day. I'm Meenakshi Narajan. Uh, basically, I'm a, a chemical engineer uh, by certification, but uh, throughout my career, I'm in uh, supply chain profession. So I hold uh, PMP and CPSM certifications as well. Rightly, I'm working with Air Products as a global product sourcing manager. Previously, I was associated with uh, Bechtel, Larson & Tubro, and Vedanta Resources. Uh, so today I'm eagerly awaiting to discuss with you all regarding this green procurement and uh, exchange ideas. Um, so before uh, moving on to uh, like, uh, if you could uh, tell me like, what are your expectations from this webinar? Uh, then I will try to cover uh, as much as possible regarding that. Anyone from audience want to put their uh, you know, points? Uh, yeah, good morning, ma'am. Uh, I want to know that uh, what are the recent uh, things, trends going on in green procurement and what are the key things uh, which at uh, India context uh, we can all do to leverage uh, the green procurement activities? Yeah, sure. Anyone else? Okay. Good morning. Uh, my name is Gina Rutayo Bukola from Nigeria. Okay. I want to know how best, the best way to practice a green procurement in Nigeria. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. We will cover. Madam, I have a question additionally. Uh, yes, we sir. all have been, we all are familiar with procurement, but uh, why this is termed as green procurement? Because it is related to green energy. Is that the only reason, or there is another any other reason? It's a very good question, sir. Um, uh, surely I will try to cover it in the slides. I have already covered it, um, and we will discuss also. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you. Hey, this is Vinay here. Um, I would like to know about uh, how to track scope three emissions from supplier when we do the procurement. Scope three emissions from supplier. Okay. Can we move on to the topic? Yes, ma'am. Uh, yes, ma'am. And we have a uh, one question in in a chat box. Okay. So we can go through that. I'd like to have some thought about the link between green and The slides are not moving, Ria. Uh, Ma'am, just click on the uh, you know, uh, center button uh, in the center of your screen. This slide is up. Sorry? Click on you know screen and then scroll down. Is it working? Achha, 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 yeah. huh. uh, so now uh, there is a question for you all. Um, how many of you are concerned about, okay, now uh, whatever the planet that I am living, you know, it is getting depleted of the resources day in and out. And within 10, 20 years, uh, the entire planet will get vanished or uh, something of the thoughts, uh, you know, uh, are you all having some anxiety about the global warming, all those stuff? I request anyone to active, uh, all to participate uh, freely, you know, then only... Uh, the session will be much more interesting. I want to understand how many of you are uh, concerned about the environment, like uh, you are all feeling, okay, when I was a kid or child, some 50 or uh, 30 years back, the environment was much more uh, greener than it is uh, today. And uh, if I uh, 
uh, continue for another 20 30 years whatever the green resources that i am having it will it will all be depleted and the uh, planet will get vanished i i will not be surviving after 20 30 years and i will not have water or fresh air to breathe so these kind of anxiety um, uh, anyone has in that uh, meeting Of course, yes, we sir. all are concerned about this. No, uh, in what way you are having? What anxiety you are having? It is, um, it is like every time you are having, or uh, how is it? Like it is a general thing. Okay, it will come up for reading newspapers, all these articles. You feel okay, the earth was greener before. Now it is no more the case, and we have to live with this. It is as it is, and we don't need any action from our end. How many of you are feeling that way? Uh, good afternoon on Mukesh this side when actually uh, yeah. the, the my only worry which I, I look for as a personal point no any any material solution will lead up in another material problem so for example if we are talking about the EV vehicles to okay. reduce the pollution and you know and uh, reduce some some amount of global warming kind of thing and uh, the government is also making some good policies for that but then again, like, you know, uh, we are not thinking about the disposal of these, those batteries. Those could be in another concern down the line 10 years or 15 years. So uh, when I'm seeing the, my only anxiety is that, okay, we are having some certain solution in terms of green energy or kind of things, but we are not working it out to the, the problem, which could be, you know, uh, we will be facing down the line 10 to 15 years. So that, that's the only thing uh, running in my mind. Other than that, yes. Problems will come on, you will keep on uh, hunting for those solutions. But uh, we need to understand like uh, whatever the you know gaps are there in terms of disposal or in terms of handling those properly, that has to be also, you know, touch upon. Yeah, I fully agree with your point. Uh, very rightly, you have touched upon the disposal. Uh, that is a, a, a very pressing thing. And uh, more than that, do you think that EV will be a long-term solution for all these things, whatever the batteries? Where will we go for the metals and all for those uh, batteries? No, I think, I think you know, see, uh, it is like in a slowly kind of thing and trend will not change uh, over the night. Now, uh, if I talk about, you know, the oil and uh, gas industry uh, per se, the two years back or precisely three years back, we were talking about, you know, O2C business kind of thing. Okay. Yeah, oil to chemicals. Yeah, yeah, oil to chemicals. But and industry has not been purely mature on that part. And we have started uh, talking about you know producing the uh, hydrogen. Now again, coming back to the automobile, we were talking more towards the uh, ethanol mixing. Then we are moving slowly to EV. Now we are. I mean, the world has started to use the hydrogen fuel. Hydrogen. Cells. Yeah. So that's the reason I was talking about that, you know, the technology will come up and they will be evolving too first. Of course, not like, not like electronic industry kind of thing. It will take some time for the mechanical industry for sure. But then we need to understand what is the consequences when it comes to the disposal or proper or probably handling of this. Like EV, you can't go so, so fast. You have to understand on the charging point and uh, the, uh, the, other infrastructure kind of things. See, roads are not straight like um, uh, other countries in India. So we, we need to uh, think about that that perspective as well. Okay, got it. So any more thoughts? My point of uh, concern is uh, on the climate change, uh, which is visible uh, in the past uh, 20, 25 years, uh, the rate at which uh, the climate activities are changing and uh, what all study is being published. Uh, they say that the actions, uh, what uh, currently we are taking is not uh, sufficient and uh, it will uh, further deteriorate the situation. And uh, it can be seen also like floods are happening and all those uh, in our vicinity, the atmosphere is changing. So we have to do a lot to, to like recover from this situation. Okay, got it. Um, see, you know, now everyone has acknowledged, okay, you, you all have concerns regarding this climate change, but uh, these concerns, you know, uh, it is not at a very uh, low level. Uh, our peer group, you know, our, the rest of the world population, they are very much concerned 
they are very much concerned about the climate change that a new word has been coined like echo anxiety echo anxiety in the sense that they have a chronic fear like uh, the earth is uh, going to get doomed all the natural resources will get depleted and uh, you know the planet will not exist in the next 10 20 years this much of chronic fears the uh, chronic fears the population uh, got started inculcating developing in their mind and even you know to some extent the chronic fear is uh, very scary to such an extent to some people like they don't want to have children also they don't want to give birth to the future generation so that the future generation doesn't get affected so uh, this is the intensity uh, of the climate change or the climate deterioration that is uh, you know uh, keep on bothering the people so uh, we all have to be cautious or uh, concerned about the climate change no doubt in that then uh, let us see some interesting facts not interesting facts some shocking facts So any guess how many tons of plastic ends up in ocean every year? Any guess? Anyone has idea how long will it take for plastics to get decomposed? Maybe close to five hundred years. Five hundred years. years. So you are all aware what e-waste is exactly? Yeah, it is the electronic. All, all, all electronic waste yeah, yeah. that, that we talk, we were talking about batteries or the the chips. All, all things are like e-waste. Mobile phones, computers, or uh, any like waste of stuff. Yeah. Um, then uh, do you know India uh, is in which position generating the e-waste? Should be should be around one first one uh, second or third. Okay. India generates around 2 million tons of e-waste and uh, it is in the top five countries for generation of the e-waste. So, you know, now uh, being an Indian, we should be very much concerned about uh, all these things. And as a supply chain professional, what best can we do to curb these climate changes? Uh, see, uh, as, a, as a individual citizen, we can't uh, address this world hunger, but as a supply chain professional, we can also contribute our bit to uh, tackle this climate change. So in what ways we can contribute? That is by means of green procurement. So in this sessions, we are going to discuss about what green procurement is actually, why should we handle, do this green procurement and how can we do the green procurement? Green procurement is, uh, someone asked like, uh, what is green procurement? Like green procurement is, the purchase of the goods and materials, which causes the minimal damage to the environment. Uh, right now, we are purchasing so many plastic bags. For each and everything, we are purchasing plastic bags or plastic substances, which is causing a huge uh, impact, you know, adverse impact to the environment. Instead of, okay, I'm, uh, we are not telling, okay, we have to fully stop purchasing all these plastics. Instead of uh, procuring the uh, new, new one-time used plastics, why don't we try out some uh, recycled plastics or uh, some eco-friendly blacks, all, all those stuff. So uh, green procurement is such that we have to uh, procure the goods and services in such a way that it costs minimum um, adverse effect to the environment. And we also should consider uh, while procuring, while uh, green procurement, throughout the process that uh, whatever the product we are procuring, it should have a minimum adverse impact to the environment. Supposedly, let us say we are uh, procuring this uh, uh, refrigerator or washing machine for our family. You know, if at all we buy this five-star uh, 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 marked uh, appliances, it consumes the energy, you know, the energy consumption will be less, which in a long term will be beneficial to the environment. And then uh, the second example is uh, this LEED building, you know, the LEED certified building. These are the uh, uh, green certification, which causes minimum pollution or minimum adverse effect to the uh, environment. 
and uh, for this plastics you know now for the packaging materials if you are uh, buying this uh, cardboard sheet or something like that which is a recycled one it causes a minimum adverse impact so like green procurement and nutshell it is not that fully eliminating the uh, adverse effect but whatever the better we can improve you know which should uh, minimize adverse effect of the um, of that substance so this is green procurement any thoughts about it Anyone would like to add? Madam, but these, uh, these things are okay when it comes to personal use and all. But for industrial use, how green procurement can add value or uh, can be of uh, any use? One simple example I tell you. Uh, we are all having this coal-powered uh, plants. Correct? Thermal power plants. Right, right. So by installing this carbon capture unit or FGD units, flue gas desulfurization before yes. it goes to right. that. So it is a kind of green procurement. Now all the carbon is getting captured before it goes right. to the environment. So by this way, we are minimizing the adverse effect. Had the FGD not been installed in the thermal power plants, then all the pollution, you know, 100% it is polluted. Now after installation of this FGD, flue gas desulfurization, uh, so it captures maximum the carbon credits and uh, okay, uh, some 10, 15% still goes to the environment, but it is unavoidable. So that way we are reducing the uh, adverse impact to the uh, environment. Is it right? Or you, do you agree with that? Uh, yeah, I agree. This is a kind of green procurement. And second thing, now people are talking about uh, hydrogen, you know, in that uh, making of hydrogen itself, there are three types, gray, blue, and uh, fully green hydrogen. So in this gray hydrogen, uh, the carbon captured will be made uh, very minimal. And in this blue, uh, it will be the carbon captured will be more. The SMR and all will come under blue hydrogen and green hydrogen. It, it is fully by electrolysis of water uh, in which there is no adverse impact at all. So that way, you know, we can uh, deploy this green procurement. Okay. Any doubts in that? No. So now we all um, have this, you know, you asked it, okay, whatever you have done, it is only for the day-to-day, uh, -day, uh, you know, uh, use our daily use. What can I do it in the office? Even if you go to the office, you will think, okay, I'm uh, using this recycled uh, paper. Then what else I can do? And then uh, someone may think, uh, okay, this is a product I'm procuring. It is not uh, causing many uh, major impact in that. Why should I change it? And uh, someone will say that I'm not placing any direct purchase orders. Uh, uh, for example, if you are awarding some service, packaging service to the sub vendors, you will come and ask, okay, I'm just giving the order. I don't know what my sub, sub supplier is going to do. How can I handle my sub supplier? If I am going to purchase this, okay, then I have some control. If the other vendor is going to do, how can I control this? And uh, someone will say, I'm not getting it at a very competitive price. Then why should I think of green procurement? So you all have uh, faced a situations like that? Any thoughts on that? Yes, um, we have some, some type of situation like this issue of uh, photocopies, which generate more heat. So how do we go about it? Anyone would like to add in this? Uh, yeah, the sub vendor point which you have shared in which other vendors are purchasing and we are just keep placing the order or we are just following up to deliver it to some other uh, customer of ours. In that, we cannot control what the other vendor is using for packaging or for the product even. Um, see, uh, this is a very valid point, but uh, now the other industries, you know, other uh, major corporates, uh, they started having a, a control over their sub vendors also. I will uh, tell you some two uh, live examples how other vendors are controlling their sub suppliers. So once again, it is emphasized, um, emphasizing on what green procurement is exactly. It is like uh, minimal adverse to the imp uh, environment adverse impact to the environment. How can we implement it? By the usage of recycled materials, bio-based product and energy efficient products. And uh, for this electronic component, uh, we can uh, buy this EPAT 
registered electronic component. If you go to the website, um, you know, they have given a, a clear cut standards. They have this gold, platinum and silver bronze. Um, so wherein uh, the different uh, uh, the medals will show the uh, different type of EPAT certification. So based on that, uh, we can opt for that uh, material. And then uh, in India, uh, for this uh, green buildings or uh, this green substances, we are giving this green pro, green pro certified products. So this is how you know while procurement uh, while procuring the materials, we can have a look at it whether it is a recycled materials or it is a re whether the material can be rene uh, renewed it and used it as a next time and whether it is EPAT certified or uh, if if at all you want to go to this environmentally preferable, you can see for this Green Pro lead uh, this five star certification all those stuff and then we can go for the procurement. And uh, whomsoever, whom, uh, whom and all, if there are in the administration services of the, of the office, they can uh, think about uh, implementing this LEED certification and this uh, uh, five-star energy appliances, all these LED bulbs and all, which uh, will help them in conserving a huge amount of energy. Can I move on to the next slide? Yes, ma'am. Uh, and uh, we are also talking about this uh, circular economy. Now the entire world is also talking about the circular economy. Um, so uh, do you want me to explain about the linear and circular economy? Linear economy is one in which, you know, we are getting the raw material. Um, we are making the materials, we are consuming it, and then we are forgetting it. Then the material will go as a waste. But in circular economy, it is not the case. Uh, the raw material will be there. We are producing the raw material. It is getting consumed once again. And uh, whatever the items that is consumed, it is not going to uh, go to waste fully. Uh, whatever the materials that can be taken up, you know, uh, we try to extract the material that can be used further, that, that can be recycled further. And then it will be used as a raw material for the uh, next uh, lot of production. So this is the uh, circular economy. Can you please say, give an example of such? Say for economy? example, yeah. Say for example, um, the Xerox machines. Um, whatever the cartridges we are using, uh, we will simply throw it away. Even I was doing some years back. But uh, there is a technology. Whatever the cartridges, uh, if you give it to that uh, uh, software uh, provider or uh, the machine, the Xerox machine or someone, you know, who uh, recycles a product that cartridges also that can be used further you know they will use it uh, for the production of the new equipment based on the uh, condition of the cartridges and uh, now uh, there is a scheme introduced by this uh, hewlett packard whatever the laptops you know the used laptops they are taking it back at a reasonable price and then re they are recycling it and uh, uh, they are uh, producing a new um, uh, laptop or uh, they, they do they recycle it and uh, they ensure that it doesn't harm the environment so this is how the products are getting recycled and uh, getting utilized in this industries okay thank you any any further examples on uh, circular economy anyone would like to give battery by battery sorry i think it is there in every part of our lives. We even dispose of a newspaper after we have plenty of that at our home, or we dispose of old iron things at our home. Everything gets recycled. So yeah, probably the circular economy is there everywhere. That is perfect. Yeah, whatever we were doing at uh, our home some time back, now it is getting a new term, and uh, even in the industries also, it is getting applied. Yeah. Some some years back, you know, all these laptops, uh, the cell phones, and all we used to throw it away just like that. Now they are not able to, uh, you know, uh, the degrade all those materials. They don't know where to uh, 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 send this piled up uh, mobile phones or this electronic equipment. So now they have come up with a new idea. Okay, these materials can be recycled and it can be used for further use. We were doing it, even the newspapers, what you were telling is absolutely uh, correct. Even now China, um, they, they do like this. Instead of uh, for uh, gift wrapping and all, they are not using the new gift wrappers. What they are doing, whatever the newspapers they are uh, uh, having it, they use it uh, to wrap the uh, gift items. You know, it is a trend in China. But uh, if you see in, uh, in our country, we are not that much comfortable in uh, wrapping the gift uh, items with the newspaper and giving it to the people. So uh, the mindset has to change. The circular economy was there, but now it is uh, getting industrialized. 
even the old clothes and all uh, we used to make it as bags or something like that uh, we used to upscale the items any thoughts on this ma'am i would like to quote an example of uh, yes, sir, adidas uh, using plastic bottles uh, thrown somewhere else they used to pick it up and with some technology now developed they are using those bottle to make shoes uh, i saw one of the video which is there in uh, youtube wherein they are uh, making shoes from those uh, bottles pet bottles okay it's nice even uh, i want to share that uh, the water uh, spiller you know that uh, we used to uh, uh, water it to our plants that can also be done uh, using the old uh, pet bottles and some batteries I, i have also seen that video after which i will share that uh, video with uh, riya so that you know she can circulate to all then having seen that uh, now what are all the benefits of uh, green procurement actually uh, now okay we are all talking about the environment environment but as a professional as a industry professional we all are concerned about the uh, mainly about the uh, profit margin or something like that so whether green procurement will help me in getting that profit margin or uh, uh, the return on investment for my business if you ask me this question i will surely say yes it will how the first and foremost thing green procurement will help in developing a resilient supply chain because normally what we do many of us uh, have shared okay many of you have shared okay um i am giving the order to my uh, vendor and after that i don't know what is he going to do with the sub vendors or how can i control over that um, but if you want to implement green procurement green procurement ask for the continuous vigilance of the sub supplier also if you are asking uh, if you are giving order to your vendor it it requires you to track whom who, who are all the sub vendors that your vendor is tracking where are they placed all those stuff that you have to uh, track by tracking all these things obviously you will uh, develop you know you will come to know about who your sub suppliers are what are their problems what is their region what materials they are using so uh, that way you know by getting gathering all this data you will develop a, a resilient supply chain tomorrow if some problems arises it will be very easy for you to attack the problem um, i want to quote this uh, uh, during covid and all you know the automobile industry is got affected uh, to a greater extent why because they have ordered uh, uh, on some vendor the vendor in turn ordered uh, the sub vendors they are all in this china region so unfortunately our uh, main automotive uh, vendors they didn't have a idea about their sub suppliers so when the covid struck you know on the, mainly all the sub, sub suppliers they were in that uh, covid struck area of uh, china so they didn't get any parts so uh, that is because they were not aware of their sub supplier details who are the sub suppliers what is the region or nothing was known to them so they were not able to have a control on the situation so uh, they they were not able to handle the uh, problem properly and uh, they incurred losses during the covid time but uh, by implementing this green procurement each and every industry will be required to have the data not only of their suppliers but also their sub suppliers their source from where they are sourcing all those details we will be in a position to gather and keep it in records if we, if you are following this green procurement religiously so by this you are developing a resilient supply chain which will help you to act fast in case of any weak situation so this is the main benefit of the green procurement the second thing is it improves the sustainability uh, and needless to say if you are procuring a renewable or uh, this recycled products or uh, which can, or if you are if you are developing some uh, reforestation like if if you are a wood manufacturer if you are buying it from a very sustainable wood and all and if you are also helping the reforestation programs like what ikea is doing then surely it improves the sustainability of your business only so tomorrow uh, you will not be running out of the raw materials which is required for your business to sustain and then it um, improves the corporate image you know there are some corporate brands we we all we all will go for the corporate image normally it is uh, the consumer's mentality if, if you have a very good corporate image normally people will get attracted and they will buy your goods so if you are very ethical or if you stand out in the crowd you know if you say uh, like my company is fully um uh, uh, following this green procurement or it is very sustainable all the stuff you know it improves the corporate image 
and uh, needless to say it helps in the uh, climate it it uh, helps uh, to reduce the um, adverse environmental impact so any thoughts on that we can save energy also madam by purchasing ie3 motors and all we can yes sir yeah sure yeah it it will be beneficial to your business also thank you then having seen that what green procurement is and what are all the benefits um and now in india as you told you know uh, we are not uh, uh, to that extent that we can uh, implement this green procurement immediately so what are all the changes that we are facing the price the first and foremost that anyone had asked for if at all i have to follow this green procurement will i get the prices it is very costly um they will quote it you know even for this uh, day to day activities of vegetables if you go for this organic uh, vegetable it will be very costly correct when compared to the normal thing you agree yes uh, so this is what is there in uh, many people's mind um it is there to some extent but if you consider it in the long run um green procurement will be beneficial trust me because you know in green procurement you will have the sustainability so if it is a continuous process the initial hiccups will be there but if you keep on following this green procurement surely because of the sustainability and you have the visibility you know you will have that uh, resilient supply chain um it will become competitive over a period of time that can be tackled and then knowledge um, um honestly you know um like uh, we all procurement professionals i don't uh, say like we all know how to implement green procurement 100% we are all like learning and implementing you know uh, trying and testing kind of thing so this knowledge how to implement what is green procurement and the ways to implement um are still we are a novice we are uh, just learning on our own and we are implementing so this is also a challenge for the green procurement and then availability um uh, the whatever the raw materials that is required for that uh, uh, you know for making the, uh, for uh, greenizing the supply chain material it may be available with us one vendor or two vendors and obviously you know if uh, there is availability uh, uh, restriction or normally the prices will be going up or the lead time will be uh, differing all the stuff we have to face it so um, unless and until uh, we uh, Uh, we mature in this process availability will be a problem for sure and then alternative um right now if it is a, if you are going to uh, buy a, a green material if it is a farm, uh, if some certification is required only few vendors will have the certification uh, not many vendors uh, will be getting into the certification or the raw materials that we are looking for so unless and until this green procurement becomes a culture or it is a necessity um, uh, we will not have so many vendors uh, uh, you know uh, so that the competition will be issue and uh, the prices will be very high and the availability also of the materials also will be, will be very high but trust me all these things will be there when when we are initiating the process but once we are into it and uh, start practicing it regularly all these things will be surely vanished or fade away any any thoughts or any uh, anyone who would like to add to it please the practical experience hello uh yes ma'am you can go ahead and okay so the first and foremost process okay having known that the importance of green procurement what are the challenges we'll be facing the benefits uh, all the stuff say in your industry uh, the first and foremost thing how do we implement green procurement okay we can say i'm going to implement green procurement um it is there in my blood okay i will do it i will uh, think about the environment i will implement it but uh, do you think as a industries without any policies or procedures we can implement the green procurement uh, can you please tell me how many uh, you know um, of you um, in your industries have the green procurement as a policy
no we are not having sorry hi this is my uh, in i am from automobile industry and uh, in automobile industry right now only european manufacturers are trying to follow namely renault is now doing this uh, without having the sustainable procurement uh, in this iso which is also required by them so they are the only one i know they are trying to do it otherwise in automobile industry right now they are trying to reduce the carbon footprint and all but as a policy so we are not uh, at par okay got it yeah and that's why in, in you know in our country uh, we are still in the very novel stage of implementing this green procurement um, so the first and foremost thing is you no know, you we should have a policy or a vision or vision you know to implement green procurement the first and foremost thing to implement green procurement is identify how can i uh, implement this green procurement if if you are a banking professional uh, then you may think of the ways uh, reducing the Uh, printouts that you are taken, changing the passbook to the uh, electronic messaging or something like that, so that uh, the papers and all and the uh, people who are visiting the office hours will get reduced. So that way, you know, the banking officials can uh, implement this green procurement. And if you are in this, um, uh, you know, electronic industry, you can think of how to how will I you uh, reuse the uh, old uh, electronic gadgets? How can I recycle the electronic gadgets and uh, use it? for me new production lot and uh, i am from uh, industrial gases then in that way we can develop new technology how to capture the carbon before it uh, goes to the atmosphere developing the new technologies and uh, if you are in the automobile uh, you can also think you know developing new technology for the uh, minimum emission of that um, uh, greenhouse gases all the stuff so that way we can think you know in what way i can contribute to the green procurement if you are um, in the administration services then um, you know the administrative professional can think of okay how many led lights i can put it how to save water all this uh, water and all if at all some sensor is there then the water consumption will get reduced so all the stuff so he can uh, think of and implement it that way we have to first uh, decide you know uh, in what way i can implement the green procurement and then um, uh, the selection of the stakeholders like uh, who are all the stakeholders uh, affected by this um, even i know uh, for this electronic industry if they say it is a reused or a recycled uh, a laptop or something um, th then the stakeholders will be the consumers uh, he or she may be having some feeling okay it is a recycled one whether it will work uh, as a new one or something like that so it is a Uh, duty of the manufacturer to elevate all those fears in that uh, consumer's mind so the stakeholders to be identified and then we have to develop the sustainability goals okay by implementing this procure, green procurement for so and so many days and i will be achieving uh, uh, energy savings of uh, this month and i will be reducing this uh, um, uh, climate change or carbon emission content by so and so so that way we have to um, uh, develop the sustainability what are we going to achieve and then the program strategy uh then uh, the delivery road map how and uh, how why and who are going to do it and then we will have to implement it in the in the supply chain with our supply chain uh, like uh, we have to make our suppliers and sub suppliers and our clients also as a part to it then only we can be uh, very successful and uh, sustainable uh, say for example if you are going to award a contract to this uh, logistics uh, service provider there you can also uh, mention you know you can put a clause to him um, he or she, she should not uh, use that uh, vessel which is more than 15 years old or 20 years old because the more the uh, vessel is getting older uh, the carbon emission will be very high so that way we can uh, uh, put a clause to the sub supplier which uh, enforces them to uh, uh, use the uh, ship uh, you know uh, that is not uh, uh, polluting the uh, environment to such a great extent and uh, if you are going to um, uh, put a contract to the package uh, industries we have to mention it like uh, uh, you have to use the recycled materials or eco friendly materials all those stuff so that way we can um, ensure that uh, that our uh, uh, partners are also following this green procurement and then the final and most important point is reporting um okay i have done everything i have implemented the green procurement policy we have to make it as a habit of reporting the results you know whatever gets measured that only gets done if at all we don't report then we will uh, just uh, put it and uh, uh, 
uh, forget it. It will only be the papers and we will not be implementing it. So the report, how many carbon capture units I have achieved or what is the reduction in the energy level I have achieved. So the reporting has to be done religiously and on a particular interval, say every six months or one year, something like that, that, that your company can decide uh, based on their frequency, based on uh, their requirements. So any thoughts on that? Uh, I'm sorry, sir, I'm not able to hear. Hello? Hello? Uh, sir, you can just, you know, write your question in chat box. Okay. Thank you. So now, uh, we all have seen that okay uh, we have to generate a policy and after generating the policy we have to create a strategy how am i going to implement it um, like uh, your company may be having a strategy of uh, uh, the lean policy uh, they may be having okay uh, i will procure the materials on just in time but uh, now we have to think over it uh, while developing the strategy for this green procurement uh, like okay will this just in time uh, helps in this uh, uh, in my green procurement policy because just in time is like as and when we require the material um, the vendor has to just deliver the material or he or she will be maintaining the stock and he will be delivering it on time uh, whether uh, this will aid in the green procurement uh, for just in time so many to and fro transactions are required so will it help uh, will it help in green procurement so uh, we have to think over it and then develop the procurement strategy um, we may change it okay i don't want to uh, follow this just in time because it is not helping me in my green procurement to such a great extent instead i will maintain a stock level for one week or something like that so this will reduce my uh, freight cost the to and fro or transactions all those stuff so that way the strategies have to be uh, followed and then the packing um, uh, while ordering for the packing or uh, to our vendors also, we can mention the packing should be uh, of this material and uh, this certification to be there. These are the uh, some of the examples wherein the packing are uh, considered to be very eco-friendly. This is one live example. Uh, this I got it from the net uh, like uh, some 15, 20 years back, uh, Nestle and Coca-Cola, they followed this material. What they have done, you know, the packing also, we can uh, we can make it as a green procurement by changing the volume, the size and shape of the packaging items and the uh, plastics that we are using it in the, for the packing. So that way we can implement uh, green procurement uh, in the packing uh, substance also. Um, uh, you don't believe like uh, Coca-Cola, uh, they, uh, they uh, recycled, you know, 23, uh, sorry, worldwide, uh, Right now, we know 200 billion bottles, uh, we are consuming it, but only 23% are getting uh, recycled. But Coca-Cola has implemented a new policy by changing the shape, all those stuff, and they have got a huge profit in that. So that way we can also implement the green procurement and uh, we can also save the cost as well as uh, conserve the energy and the uh, uh, climate also, the environment too. Uh, so now, uh, as far as transportation is concerned, uh, uh, which one do you offer? Sorry, Minakshi, that... sorry, sorry, I am I am disturbing you. Uh, yes, yes, there. please. On the packaging part and on the designing part, anything you came across for the when we talking about you know the overseas transportation, where typically we want like see where the packing and all and uh, wooden case and other things are being used, hmm. and again you know you the all the wooden has to be disposed just like that. So anything uh, on that part you come across or you would like to share because that that where we, we can, uh, you know, uh, utilize those thought maps. Um, I will give my email ID and I will share you that. Uh, we have that uh, eco-friendly, you know, uh, the green procurement packing. I can give you an uh, idea about right now. It's not there in my mind what is the exact material to be used, but we are using it. At least, you know, we can also check it with our vendors, yeah. whether they can use it or not and uh, work it up. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, we are uh, we are working, uh, we are having a clause for that uh, uh, green procurement uh, packaging. I will give my email ID. You can uh, send an email to me. I will share the details. Sure. Thank you very much. Okay. 
so which one you are using uh, frequently uh, the track rail or uh, ship for transportation of your items typically for the overseeing assignments it's like ship okay uh, because it will be like more uh, economical purpose for us if it is not urgent ship is the best part for all the you know the indigenous supply it is the on road transportation road on road transport. transport but it's a shocking news like you know say for example you know uh, this i got it from one website uh, the csx.com it uh, gives you a uh, comparison you know if you want to transport some uh, 2500 tons if you are going by uh, a rail and a truck uh, it gives you how much uh, carbon emissions are there higher if you are opting for a truck i have uh, selected some 1107 uh, miles and 2500 tons so if you are going by uh, if you are opting for a uh, rail one it will reduce the carbon uh, emission by 221 tons yeah, I think similar example is set for the uh, the ship as well as uh, the airplane as well. Yes. I, I believe like uh, if you go with the ship, uh, it is low, lower emission part. Yes. But uh, for the indigenous supply as and I was talking about uh, earlier also onto the infrastructure kind of thing, uh, rail will not be useful for all, all the all the stuff. So uh, we have to manage that part. Uh, why do you say that uh, rail will not be used, you know? Now for this coal transportation and for this major commodities, we are using example, rail to a greater say, extent. Let's say my vendor, let's say my vendor is sitting into, uh, you know, uh, Mumbai, mm -hmm. and my site is in a Nagothane. The uh, anyway, I have to do it ag again in a short run of tra uh, rail, and then the, uh, the tra truck. my transportation time will increase. My transportation transportation cost will increase. So uh, to avoid on that extent. I would uh, prefer to go for the road part. Okay. So of course, like if some something is coming from Delhi to Bombay, uh, of course uh, that can be manageable with the two two kind of transportation with the okay. change in policy of transit kind of thing. Okay. So the emissions, you know, whatever the emission that can be controlled, that equals to the electricity of twenty four homes for one year, uh, and uh, forty three acres of pine, you know, whatever the trees that absorb carbon. Um, that can also be saved and uh, so all this stuff you know it gives a rough idea it is always better to use the rail instead of trucks and uh, we all know that shipping by uh, ship is greener uh, this is just a, a pictorial uh, representation you know of uh, how much miles uh, one ton can be carried per gallon, gallon of uh, fuel if you are going uh, by truck uh, you can only transport 59 miles uh, miles per gallon of uh, fuel and if it is uh, rail it will give efficiency of 202 miles and if it is by ship it is uh, even more very good it is 514 miles so this gives a rough idea like uh, transportation by ship will be a, a very uh, uh, environmental friendly mode of transportation and now as Mukesh told like um, you know, for uh, indigenous you know in a uh, transportation within India um, he has to uh, depend on the uh, trucks uh, but okay in India the infrastructure is yet to get developed but if you see uh, in Europe and all mainly in this uh, uh, Denmark Netherlands area they are following the short tree uh, shipping Okay, and, they, and, they uh, don't. Suraj, uh, sorry to interrupt you. So Suraj Modi has a, you know, one doubt. Like, are, are we, you know, considering electrical train? No, 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 no. It's not electrical. It's not electrical. It's not electrical. Thank you. Not electrical. Okay, and uh, if at all you go to this Europe, uh, they they don't have any truck business. They they have they have ninety percent they are out of the truck business, and now they are uh, following a short sea uh, shipping mode, wherein you know they will collect uh, uh, some uh, ships of some hundred dead weight tons or something like that. Uh, the inland uh, transportation, the uh, the infrastructure has been developed in such a way. Uh, they do all the things. The short uh, distance also they uh, move it by. Uh, ships only in that way uh, it is very economic uh, economic also and environmental friendly also so any thoughts on that regarding the transportation part anyone would like to add
So what about in India? We have waterways. We have waterways, but uh, we are using barge, but not to a greater extent. Uh, say, for example, uh, uh, we have this Kandla port, and then we have this Mumbai port. Okay, that port to port we are having, and nowadays all these heavy uh, industries uh, they are uh, getting built uh, very near to the ports. But uh, if you see the utilization of these ports, um, it's hardly uh, you know uh, sixty or seventy percent of the capacity. But it has improved for the past ten years. Um, but uh, I feel like uh, there are still uh, areas for improvement. Do you yeah, think yeah. it has achieved the uh, full potential? Yeah, that is right. Absolutely correct. There is a lot of scope for improvement. Yeah, under the Sagar Mala project, absolutely correct. Uh, still, if you ask me, I am I am being a purchaser. Suddenly, if I have to move some uh, heavy equipment or and all, you know, my mind immediately go to the uh, movement by uh, trailer or truck only. So it okay. has to it there there has to be a shift in the purchasing procure the procurement professional. That is, that is right. That is absolutely right because road transportation, uh, surface transportation, whether it is rail or whether it is road, is cheaper. Than uh, going over the barrages and others. Yeah, um, that is okay. Thank sir, uh, here I have some different views. Like uh, it, it has to be evaluated in detail uh, regarding the economic uh, options. Sir, what do you say? Yeah, yes, comparison is to be made. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. But uh, if you see for a very high quantum of uh, equipment, high uh, the tonnage, high tonnage, uh, surely the sea freight will be cheaper. And uh, that is right. That is right. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, one more area where we can uh, the important area, you know, for green procurement is uh, we have to automate the process, the digitalization of the process. So, Absolutely uh, by right. this... so we have to look at the constraints of our road network now that and um, now that is getting improved, but it will take some more time Then logistics cost, which way we would like to work on. Yeah, it's a very good developing area, green procurement. So basically, a mindset both in the industry, people, and individuals has to be there. Thank you. Uh, so now in this last two years also, um, like if you take this logistics area, uh, initially all this uh, road permits, all those things initially it, were, it used to be a, a hot copy. But uh, for the past two years, uh, they have uh, digitalized it. So uh, this uh, reduces the lead time. And it is environmental friendly. By this, you know, uh, we are uh, obviating the need for the usage of the papers. And the uh, process also is going on smoothly and uh, it reduces the errors. So this is how uh, digitalization aids in the green procurement initiative. So any questions on this? Any thoughts, please? Uh, Ma'am, may I ask a question? Yes, uh, it is very good thing. Uh, through this digitization, we are uh, reducing this uh, dependency on paper at all. But simultaneously, uh, we are creating more e waste also. Yeah, that like uh, understood. Uh, actually, you know, uh, in the uh, initial itself, you know, um, someone told uh, by uh, getting away from one kind of uh, um, um, harm we are getting into uh, the other side of uh, the evil or uh, harm. Yeah, by coming out of this paper, uh, we are generating more e-waste. So now for this e-waste, people are developing new technology, how to recycle it and use it. Yes, the answer is uh, basically what I have understood from so many uh, webinars and discussions we take. The answer at the end of the day is uh, recycling. We will be able to recycle it, let's say, 80% even. Then we can survive more. Otherwise, uh, whatever we do, we will be in trouble. Yes, to conserve anything, you know, uh, uh, be it our own personal wealth also, including. Uh, uh, the best way to uh, uh, protect or conserve is to reduce, reuse. We have to reduce the uh, thing, you know, the usage and then reuse it. Whatever uh, the items, try to reuse it. Hello? Yes, ma'am. Uh, 
Yes, uh, sorry, I was on mute. Yes, you are right on that part. We need to do it. Only mindful conception can make a change. Yes, that is uh, another uh, thing. We should we should go for buying uh, what is needed, and we need to uh, avoid the this packing and all lengthy packing cycle. Because packing is related to preserve also and prevent from any damage also. But this uh, gift wrapping kind of uh, thing you have uh, given a very good example. But we are using uh, daily basis and trading more. We we need to be careful as an individual also as a buying professional also. Then only uh, when the entire community will. Think in that fashion. Likewise, uh, China, uh, like it is a trend. Reuse uh, the newspaper. Yes, this is a very good example of reusing the newspaper. Okay. Uh, someone has asked a question. Is there a government policy related to the green procurement or something planned? Sure, planned soon. Yes. Um, uh, surely there is a policy. Uh, now the government has announced uh, on August 2020 or 2021, like uh, the hydrogen policy. that itself is a green policy uh, so in which india has evinced uh, interest to uh, invest billions in this hydrogen business and now uh, the investment on the th thermal power plants and all will be uh, gradual uh, getting reduced gradually so this is how the government uh, policies also aligned with the green procurement Mr. Vinay, is that okay? Yeah, that's thank you. Thank you for that confirmation. Then, um, uh, just two live examples I want to give. Uh, the Xerox way of doing business. Xerox, they are mainly into this printer business, and uh, they are in this market for a long time. What are all the things? Uh, because they, they, uh, they being the major uh, generator of this e-waste. You know, so many printing machines they are uh, doing it, and. Uh, No, they contribute uh, much to the environmental uh, adverse impact. Uh, so what they have done? Um, just a minute. Uh, they have partnered uh, uh, with a, a company called Close the Loop. They have partnered with a company called Close the Loop, wherein uh, they will give all this um, used cartridges to them. And uh, the Close the Loop, the company, you know, they will uh, extract the metals that can be used uh, for future. They will extract it and then give it back to these rocks. And uh, they will uh, use the other materials in some other materials, or they will dispose it in a very environmental friendly way. So uh, that way, you know, Xerox was able to um, um, uh, be competitive, cost competitive, because they are using the recycled materials, and uh, they help in uh, being a eco friendly company also. so that way xerox is implementing the sustainable development in their uh, organization the next one is ikea ikea iwe you know ikea uh, they have a, uh, a sustainable procurement policy iwe uh, so ikea they are mainly into this uh, uh, home decor company you know the furniture company uh, so the main uh, raw material for them is uh, cotton and uh, wood uh they ensure that whatever the cotton and uh, the wood they are procuring they are from the sustainable uh, uh, raw materials the uh, sustainable in the way i am telling they are not procuring the wood from the uh, tropical forest uh, which are already declining you know uh, so they will buy it from the tropical forest uh, uh, that are not in the depleting stage and uh, the cotton also uh, they will procure it uh, considering the water content and the fertilizer used so that way they declare uh, their products as the raw materials as uh, the sustainable one and in addition to that uh, to keep their running business they are also uh, helping in the reforestation programs um, uh, they are uh, funding uh, to develop the new new forest so by this way whatever the wood they are consuming uh the depleting uh, the resources they are depleting they are giving it back to the society as well and uh, the third important thing is regarding packing they have come with a new way you know now they are not using that uh, plastics or something like that um they um, uh, they are in the process of uh, developing one new technology wherein the packing will be made of some fungi which is a eco friendly item uh, so these are the ways ikea is leading the way in the sustainable procurement 
Yeah, actually, just to add here, uh, what yeah. I also overheard with the AKI is that uh, if you are purchasing the home decor from them, okay. and after a few years, you know, we wanted to upgrade or we wanted to change, we can resell them the same thing and uh, they will give the good price of uh, it and they will uh, replace. So okay. that way also, the, you know, uh, we need not to uh, too much worried about handling of waste if we are sending it back. Okay. And um, yeah, I forgot to cover it in the slide. Uh, in the beginning, uh, someone asked, how can we, uh, you know, measure the scope three emissions uh, from our sub supplier? Uh, you know, we have to ensure that we have to see to it that our sub suppliers report uh, their uh, CCS content in their uh, sustainability report. By this way only, we can uh, ensure that. Um, or we can conduct some surveillance audit uh, if they agree to it. But uh, the best way to uh, attract the sub suppliers performance is to uh, get their report. They have to declare their report, the sustainability report, wherein the CCS and all getting captured. Any further thoughts on this? Anyone would like to add? Yeah, um, this is uh, Amit Agarwal, ma'am. I want to add um, these examples what you have given are, uh, yes, very apt and very good examples, but are for foreign uh, international companies. Um, we can also take an example from ITC, which is an Indian company, and uh, the e-chopal, what they have started actually uh, way back. It, if you if we study, a lot of people might be knowing it, but the, uh, this, uh, the help what they have given to the government, obviously the first thing to themselves, they were in deep trouble. Then they somehow uh, invented this uh, each of all thing, which now actually is helping a um, uh, lot of farmers, helping the social and farm forestry. Uh, they have uh, reinstated the watershed development, women's empowerment, livestock development, and education. If means uh, uh, we should uh, we should think we should read this as a very good example of how a company can change the whole scenario of a. Uh, 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 it is not a CSR. It is actually e environment and social uh, governance responsibility. How beautifully they have done uh, this um, thing and helped India. Thank you. Thank you for sharing this example. Thank you, ma'am. Any thoughts? So uh, under the thoughts, ma'am, uh, I would like to uh, uh, I would like to bring it again. So do we say sustainability and green procurement go hand in hand? So because if we tie up all these things together, uh, would that be okay? Uh, if we start practicing green procurement, it will become sustainable. So uh, if you look at the World Bank then and look at its uh, sustainability and SDGs, why do we find green procurement listed there? Any ideas on that? No, please come back. See, in the, the World Bank does a lot of information on uh, procurement, number, that is procurement separately, okay. purchase procurement. Number two, it also talks about sustainability. So any relationship that has been built up or thought at your company? Procurement and sustainability. Yeah, green procurement and sustainability. How does it, has any World Bank done any study or because it keeps on informing on these things a lot. So, or have you tried anything or attempted anything on this? Oh, are you related? regarding, uh, regarding are you World Bank, whether it has done or whether it is there in the report, um, I'm sorry, I don't have the answer right now. I will have to check. But right. uh, if you ask whether in our company we are doing, yes, we are doing it. Okay. Okay, thank you. And uh, for your information, you know, even you can also try it in your companies. Uh, we all are using this uh, computers, cartridges, everything, you know, so many uh, electronic equipments we are using in our companies. So there yeah. are so many vendors who are ready to collect all those e-waste, uh, get it recycled. 
so yeah. you know uh, this is a simple way of uh, uh, contributing to the uh, green procurement so you can reach out to the local vendors you know wherever uh, uh, you are located uh, so for getting all those things uh, uh, all those e waste recycled yeah this is this is uh, this has been happening so past 30 30 odd years yeah every time you have to re you have to replace reuse recycle you do all these things uh, okay i will have a look at the okay documents thank you very much thank, thank you. you oh minakshi ma'am yes yes sir yeah uh, so my myself vikesh uh so i just have one uh, uh question or rather a general uh, query uh, i mean from at your perspective how do you think that we can overcome challenges in sustainable uh, procurement uh, when we have uh, issues like you know little support or pushback from the indian suppliers and there is a lack of government uh, schemes or funding and it all ends up in a higher cost uh, so if you look at the procurement at organization level everything is so cost centric uh and this great procurement ends up uh, with a higher cost how do you address such uh, challenges uh it's a very good question um as i already told you, you know in the initial uh, phase while uh, execution of the first two contracts um, uh, surely uh, we may end up uh, may, there may be some little bit delays or uh, uh, some problems you know uh in the higher prices but uh, the best way to uh, make it sustainable is the development of new new vendors and new technologies we have to uh, uh, create a competition in the market for the renewable energy that that will only be have uh, happen like uh, if all the procurement pro professionals or the organizations they go for the uh, green procurement if if the um, uh, uh, suppliers they come to know like uh, the industries are now giving weightage more, more and more weightage the renewable or the green uh, uh, raw materials uh, they will start uh, manufacturing it or uh, you know uh, they will start importing it or something they will be doing by doing so you know the market will be flooded with the uh, uh, green raw materials by which we can um, uh, get a good uh, uh, prices as well as the lead time so uh, this will happen but initial one or two contracts we will have to face the uh, we have to bear the brunt absolutely i agree with you and even for way, i think we have a long way to go and and even for this green hydrogen uh, say for example now india is uh, uh, you know they are going to invest in billions for this green hydrogen uh, for this electrolyzer uh, the which is the main part for this green hydrogen uh now uh, we we don't have the indigenous manufacturers uh we are signing the mohms with the uh, foreign vendors which which obviously will be increasing the cost but um uh, indian manufacturers they are also in the uh, process of developing the technology and uh, one day you know if not uh, uh, within the next two months next few years at least within two or three years we will have our own electrolyzer then it will be uh, a yet another item you know to that it will not be a so great item that it has to be sourced uh, um, uh, from foreign countries and it is not available in india like that thank you thank you very much I so when there is a demand when there is a demand uh, uh, surely the suppliers will show interest to produce it thank you thank you ma'am thank you any further thoughts uh, yeah ma'am uh, along with this demands there has to be enactment by the government as well so because unless and until you make it mandatory nobody is going to use it and if ever there is no enactment there will be no manufacturer who will be interested to uh, manufacture such type of products so along with this all these things what we said are well appreciated but there has to be enactments uh, yes sir i agree surely surely you know unless and until there is a pressure you know people will be in their comfort zone there be normally we know if you are comfortable in getting the materials we don't want to change unless and until um, uh, something is pressing uh, you know even uh, india is also uh, uh, having some very ambitious plans for reducing this carbon capture i tell you what happened in uh, china they were having so many steel industries so just because they want to emphasize on this uh, uh, you know uh, carbon capture and all those stuff uh, many of the steel industries they got closed uh, closed 
they they passed a law they have to close the steel industries and many of the steel industries in shanghai got closed and uh, for the uh, for, for, for temporarily you know there was a huge spike in the uh, steel prices and after that the india got uh, benefited out of this all those sticks have happened unless and until there is a enactment or law nothing is going to happen china did it and now china is encouraging encouraging their manufacturers uh, some incentives if at all they prove that uh, they have uh, saved so many carbon capture units they are also giving some financial incentives to the manufacturers that way they are encouraging it and even uk but uk okay they have backed out they told uh, like no more th thermal power plants all have to be shut down now only the renewable sources but after this ukraine uh, war and all since they are not getting the enough uh, uh you know uh, raw material the power consumption is also very high now they uh, went back to the uh, renewing the thermal power plants that is another story which i don't want to quote but uh, uh, surely unless and until uh, there is a um, enactment or law from the government uh, things will be sluggish it will not take the full shape i agree sir right ma'am also in a similar example like uh, apple apple Um, uh, recently claimed that they will be sourcing from the uh, uh, vendors who are zero zero emission or uh, have very zero carbon footprints or they have a very solid uh, um, uh, this uh, sustainability uh, towards vision towards sustainability so rio tinto we all no it is a very big australian company uh, catering to non ferrous steel coal uh, all businesses so they are a very good supplier to um, uh, means apple on the uh, uh, this um, l uh, l uh, alcova uh, no no alu uh, aluminum aluminum for the apple iphones so they straight away uh, means uh, shed off with their coal business because uh, coal is um, uh, means a lot of carbon emissions uh, is happening over the coal and nowadays even all the companies have some alignment towards the sdgs uh, sustainable development goals which are 17 and also it is looked after by a uh, means i as a procurement manager commercial manager when do my due diligence or when uh, finalize any uh, uh, future supplier i look into the how they are aligned to the sustainable development goals what are their policies and then uh, means this weightage also is there in the evaluation criteria so the awareness is uh, getting uh, means uh, now between the buyers also okay yes even uh, during the supplier qualification process or audit process all these questions can be uh, you know added into the supplier questionnaire form uh, now we you know uh, companies also have insisted uh, what is their uh, uh, you know uh, the green policy of that uh, company what is the diversity policy so all those things you know uh, we can add it and uh, once uh, the supplier fulfills the requirement then we can embed those uh, vendors into our system so that way we can uh, integrate the supply chain to meet our requirements